If I'm retired, what do I need an alarm clock for? I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. So why do I have to get up not to do it? As long as I don't have to get up. Why do you say we take advantage? Peggy? <laughs> Honey? Morning, Dad. Mason! <laughs> what? What have you done with your mother? She's making breakfast. I crawled in while the place was still warm. Did I surprise you? You came close. Why aren't you getting ready for school? We're going on a field trip to the museum. I've already been to the museum. Yeah, go again. I almost got locked in last time. How would you like it if I was trapped overnight and in the morning they found me all shriveled up? The victim of the horrible curse of the Pharaoh. <laughs> Dad? Don't rush me. I'm thinking about it. You know what I like about you, Dad? We don't have a normal father-son relationship. I mean, the plants survived moving better than I did. But then they're used to being transplanted. I'm not. Peggy, tell Mason he could get in bed with me. It was my own idea. I believe in self-expression. <laughs> Did he get in bed with you? I thought it was you. Oh, dear. Oh, that's okay. He only touched my tush and called me honey. Mason, go get dressed and have your breakfast. Howard, hurry and help me unpack or we'll never get settled. Every time we move, you say the same thing. What do you mean, every time we move? In 33 years of marriage, this is the second time. Now, that doesn't exactly make us gypsies. Don't worry, we'll get settled. Well, what about Mason? Howard, all the child psychology books say that children who are exposed to a sudden traumatic change, like moving, can develop severe personality disturbances. With Mason, how can you tell? <laughs> That's not a constructive attitude, Howard. I just know he's not happy here yet. For one thing, he hasn't even unpacked his suitcase. Now, Piggy, it was your idea to move here. Mason has a genius IQ. Well, the best school for geniuses is in New York. Mason loves magic. The best school for magicians is in New York. Mason needs to be exposed to real life. The best place to get mugged is in New York. <laughs> Howard, you're not helping. Well, look, if we can move here for Mason's sake, the least he can do is appreciate it. Appreciate what? The advantages of New York. Name one. Tell him, Peggy. What about the special school you're starting? Oh, yeah. It's really swell. It's full of boys who push you around and won't let you eat your lunch. Well, why don't you tell the teachers? Those are the teachers. <laughs> Go to school, Mason. Bye, Dad. So long, Mason. Howard, I think I've put my finger on what's wrong with Mason. Nobody has that big a finger. He doesn't like New York because he hasn't made any friends yet. Peggy, put yourself in the sneakers of an average eight-year-old kid in this neighborhood. Would you want to be friends with Mason? <laughs> of course, I'm his mother. Wait a minute, Joyce is his sister. 
I can send him over there to play with little Carrie. Well, you do whatever you want. I'm gonna get dressed. Howard, ignoring Mason won't solve the problem. Mason who? <laughs> Joyce, darling, uh, after school is over today, guess who's coming over to play with little Carrie? Mason. Mason, your brother, that's who. <laughs> Hello, Joyce. Exactly what I'd call a stimulating afternoon. <laughs> hey, Mother, who are you going to send me tomorrow? <laughs> Godzilla? <laughs> All right, what happened? I'd rather not talk about it. Good! One afternoon! Just one! the afternoon they spent together, and all of a sudden, my daughter is half of Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, hello, Joyce. How'd it go? Not good, huh? <laughs> Daddy, thanks to my sweet little brother, do you know what Carrie did? <laughs> she asked me for a chicken head so she could put a curse on her doll. <laughs> her Barbie doll. My housekeeper almost quit. And you know how hard it is to get help nowadays. To say nothing of chicken heads. But, but I couldn't up over here, and especially when I put this glass to the wall to amplify the sound. You see what I mean? You're bringing up your own CIA. Joyce, I think you have a problem. I do. You. It's a usual story. Sibling rivalry. You make me laugh. I'm 23 years older than you are. Sis, I'm beginning to think you resent me. Please, tell him not to call me sis. <laughs> Joyce doesn't resent you, dear. She loves you. With me, you can do both at the same time. <laughs> Mason. Dear. <laughs> uh, Carrie is a very sensitive child. I just don't want you filling your head with strange ideas. The way you're bringing her up, any ideas are better than none. <laughs> uh, hello. Hello, dear. How was school? It was a long, excruciating day. <laughs> Poor baby, you work so hard. No, well, that's not it. Nobody could use the boys' bathroom. It was flooded. <laughs> Did you know arithmetic books don't flush easy? <laughs> Mason, you didn't. Not me, Tommy Evans. Tommy Evans? Oh, is that a new friend? You want me to be friends with a vandal? Oh, yes. <laughs> I know you don't like my harping on this one subject, but I really think you should try to make a new friend. I already did. You did? Uh-huh. Howard? I think I'm gonna like this place after all. What's up? Mason's made a friend. He's adjusting to New York. Good. Now all New York has to do is adjust to Mason. <laughs> Mason? Yeah? Where did you meet this friend? In the park. His name is Link. He was flying a kite shaped like a pterodactyl, and he let me advise him on the aerodynamics. <laughs> I've never met anyone like him before. I'm sure he feels the same way about you. <laughs> with him this weekend. He's sleeping over tonight so we can get an early start tomorrow. Three hours, he's found a blood brother. From now on, we're gonna spend all our time together. Like David and Pythias, the low region Tano. They read King Kong. <laughs> Mason, dear, even Faye Ray had other friends. Peggy, he's in a good mood. Quit while you're ahead. Oh. And guess what? I'm going to unpack my suitcase. Oh, oh. That problem with Mason is solved. One down, 999 to go. It's wonderful seeing him so enthusiastic. He's like another Mason. Another Mason? 
Now there's an alarming thought. <laughs> You don't fool me one bit. You're pleased about it, too. Ah, I'm pleased that he's going on a camping trip. We can spend the weekend to ourselves. Hey, Mom! Mason! Where's my sleeping bag? He's gonna be here any minute. Hey, Mason, who's going on this camping trip with you? I told you, Link. I mean, who else? Link's father? Nope, just Link. Oh, well, that's out of the question. You can't go by yourselves. Can they, Howard? I refuse to answer on the grounds I might have to take them. <laughs> take care of ourselves. Howard, I will not let you spoil Mason's fun just when he seems to be adjusting so well. Good, but he's not going? He's going. <laughs> I'll get it. That must be Mason's little friend now. Well, be sweet. Oh, I'm always sweet, especially when I have to get up at the crack of dawn to be breakfast for the mosquitoes. <laughs> Howard, but ever since I had Mason, my life has been a series of backfires. He's very upset, Howard. A mother can tell. Just by the way he won't eat and won't talk. Little things like that. <laughs> Howard? Howard? Yes. What is it, dear? Sometimes I think you put those headphones on just to shut me out. Are you sure there's music? Oh. It's about Mason, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He's not himself. Oh, I hope we did the right thing calling off the camping trip. I mean, what do we know about this Link person? He's not even in Mason's peer group. <laughs> Who is? <laughs> it's just not right. A man that old and an eight-year-old boy. Well, for all we know, he's a pervert. <laughs> oh, I don't think Mason leans that way. <laughs> Not Mason, Link. Oh, I'm sure he isn't a pervert. They don't usually let themselves be brought home to meet the family. I would like to know where my green sweater is. Oh, dear, you're not going to pack your suitcase again. Now, see here, Mason. Just because the camping trip with Link fell through... Well, you wouldn't even let him sleep over. What kind of a companion for a kid is a grown man? You're a grown man. My point exactly. <laughs> My green sweater, please. It's in your bottom drawer. Well, we're right back where we started. friend of mine. In the closet? He's a closet friend. <laughs> He's very small. Small is nothing to be ashamed of. Let him out. <laughs> I smell like a moth. Mason, what are you doing here? I'm moving him with you. I ran away from home. Now, what did you do a corny thing like that for? 
Who's she? Nobody. What do you mean, nobody? <laughs> Look, kid. <laughs> you can't move in here with me. I mean, my pad is your pad, but there's no room. Oh, I don't take up much space. I'll hunch over a lot. <laughs> my name's Bernice. Yeah, her name's Bernice. We'll call her Bernie. <laughs> Mason, it's like this. If it were any other time, hmm? I got company right now. That's okay. Bernie can stay. I should think so. I paid for the pizza. She paid for the pizza, Link. I didn't get anchovies. Anchovies give me hives. And why should I finance my own boobs? <laughs> Link, can I talk to you for a minute in private? Yeah, yeah, sure. Not very bright, is she? <laughs> she doesn't have to be. Well, how are we gonna get rid of her? We're not. I guess that would be a little rude. Okay, the three of us can play cards or something. Bertie, do you think you could handle go fish? <laughs> Mason, I think it might be a much better idea if you went home, for your sake. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I'll come back later. No, 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 look, you just, you can't live here with me, kid. You see, I, I like flying solo. You don't want me. Of course I want you. We're buddies. We're two of a kind. Only, I've got to be on my own. He told me the same thing. <laughs> See? Besides, what do I know about raising a kid, huh? You belong with a family, with a mother and a father. Somebody who who fix your lamb chops and cure your sniffles and tuck you into bed at night, right? Hey, you understand, don't you? Sure. You don't want me. Let's go, fish. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Bennett. Oh, come in. Thanks. Link, isn't it? Yes. I almost didn't recognize you in long pants. Yeah. Uh, listen, did Mason check in okay? Check in? Well, I wasn't aware he checked out. Mason ran away from home. He... Oh, he... Couldn't have. Yeah, yeah, he wanted to bed down at my place, but I should have towed him back here myself, only I had this girl with me. How old was she? <laughs> What's the difference? I was just wondering. Um, Mrs. Bennett, she was a full-size girl. <laughs> Maybe I should call the police. Good luck with this description. I just thought of something. Uh, he could be with Carrie. I'll call Joyce first. Uh, I won't have to give her a description. Mr. Bennett, uh, I wouldn't sweat about Mason. He can handle whatever comes along. Link, you gotta tell me something. You and Mason hit it off pretty good. Now, you can't blame a father for wondering. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, it's like this. Mason is an eight-year-old adult, and I'm a 42-year-old kid. <laughs> but even more than that, Mason is something else. He breaks the mold. He dances to a different bongo. He looks at the world as though it were the day after creation, and he's got a franchise on the sunrise. Our Mason? <laughs> I thought he was just offbeat. <laughs> Joyce wasn't home. Maybe they ran away together. I'll have to notify the police. Why, he could get kidnapped or, or be run over or, or fall down a manhole or... Or he could come home. Sun City. He can't even run away if you want to. <laughs> Mason, where have you been? Oh, nowhere. Two policemen and an old lady all insisted on taking me home. The old lady stole my suitcase. Hey, glad to have you back, kiddo. I was afraid of that. Well, as long as he's home safe. Well, thanks, Link. 
We'll take it from here. All right. Well, what have you got in mind? Nothing. Well, Howard, you have to talk to Mason. What about? Well, for one thing, what happened at Lynx? S-E-X. I explained about the birds and the bees the last time I talked to him. The birds and the bees are biology. They're not S-E-X. Will you stop spelling it? <laughs> well, you're always spelling it. I am not always spelling it. You're even spelling it when we're having S-E-X. <laughs> Howard. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I come in? You own the room. You own the whole place. What you doing? Looking at the ants outside. Yeah. People down there do look like ants, don't they? They don't look like ants. They are ants. On the windowsill. <laughs> I put a jelly sandwich out there yesterday. Oh. Are you about to have a father-son talk with me? <laughs> well, get it over with. Why'd you run away? Nobody wants me. Well, that's not true. Remember how I asked if I could come in and you said I own the place? You know what that means? It means you came in. No. means I own the apartment because I pay for it. The same way I own my clothes because I pay for them. If we're going to talk about clothes, I'm not too crazy about your brown suit. What's wrong with you? It looks like a piece of chocolate that's been left in the box too long. Let me try another tack. Uh, you own your books and your games and your magic tricks because you bought them, right? Some of them you gave me. True. You want them back? No, I don't want them back. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that a person can own anything he wants in this whole world, except another person. Well, I never said I owned Link. Well, how come you thought you could just up and move in with him? I bet I could have, if it wasn't for that girl. Anyway, I know what she was there for. What? S-E-X. <laughs> You've been talking to your mother. <laughs> You won't let him be my friend. Well, I uh, can be your friend. We were wrong about that. He can be your friend, but he he shouldn't be your only friend. You got to keep your eyes open, welcome other friends, accept change as part of your life. Oh, it's a tough world. <laughs> I brought you into it. I never promised it'd be easy. Now, about your mother and me, don't ever think that we don't want you. Why? If you hadn't come along, Mason, we'd probably be spending most of our time looking into the fireplace. You... you keep us young, Mason. You thaw out our lives. And we love you. And we thank you for it. You're welcome. <laughs> Dan, I'll make other friends. But right now, is it okay if I call Link? Oh, he isn't home yet. I know. Hey, wait! Wait! Wait for me! Dad? Hmm? Remember when I told you we don't have a normal father-son relationship? We have better. understand what happened. What did you say to him? Nothing. Well, you must have said something. He was smiling. Well, I explained life to him. In five minutes? Oh, that's got to be a world record. Peggy, what do you say tomorrow we go out and buy me a new brown suit? <laughs> a what? And while you're at it, another suitcase for me. <laughs> What a pterodactyl is Who knows what hieroglyphics are And how to make O'Keel and shot Everybody knows Mason And everybody knows Mason knows Mason knows What a schizophrenic kid Who knows what cantilevers are And he 
Legend Dr. Spock. Everybody knows Mason. 